So it's time to ask you, I mean, what, you know, if we've, our four choices are Robert Foster, Cole Beasley, Lorenzo Alexander, Levi Wallace, as to which undrafted player will on the Bills roster will have the biggest impact in 2019. What's your pick, Brownie? Mine's Robert Foster. Okay. And tell um, me why. Well, it's a couple of things. Do I... I was, I was a little bit on the fence because I was thinking Cole Beasley because of the reasons I was talking about in the last segment, you know, likely to have the top target total, high percentage throws, more chances to make plays. But I think if we're talking about impact right. in 2019, I think Robert Foster is going to be making the game-changing plays. You know, Cole Beasley is going to help keep you on the field. Robert Foster is going to be making a difference on the scoreboard with big plays. Um, and... I roll in there the fact that this is a guy that has built-in chemistry with Josh Allen. Those two worked together a ton last year. And people are going to maybe sneeze at his stats from last year and say, eh, whatever, you know, rookie. Because I, I wrote a story about him in mid-January on buffalobills.com. He had 27 catches for 541 yards and three touchdowns last year. Right. Almost all of that production came in the last seven games of the season. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. He so was, this is the guy. He, led was the, the, he was off the team for a minute. Led the NFL in yards per catch, 20 per catch. Last time a bill did that was Eric Moulds in 98 when he went to the Pro Bowl. The next four receivers on yards per catch in the NFL after Foster, Deshaun Jackson, Josh Gordon, Mike Evans, and Dante Pettis, who was also a rookie last year. That's a pretty good group, number okay. one. He was the only NFL rookie last year with three 100-yard receiving games in 2018, putting him in a group with Juju Smith-Schuster, Mike Thomas, and Amari Cooper as rookies with three 100-yard receiving games in their rookie season since 2015. I mean, we're talking pretty exclusive company here. Uh, and, oh, by the way, he also led all rookies in receiving yardage from week 10 to 17, the last seven games of the season when he played. Right. right. So... This is a guy who was undrafted. The other guys behind him among the rookies, all of them right behind him on that stat list were drafted in the first or second round. Sure. So for, me, for my money, in terms of impact from an undrafted player, Foster is my number one guy for 2019 because I just think he's going to take the cover off of this thing. And now with upgrades at the receiver position, a better offensive line, what we believe is a deeper running back core, you can't put all your full attention on Robert Foster. You can't do it. Right. So what are you playing? Are you going to play cover two oh, with two safeties I'm deep hold, and roll well, those guys over the top and leave I'll, the underneath yeah, for beats? Hold I don't know that anybody was staying up nights, even in the second half of last right. season, waiting for Robert Foster to beat him. You know, like if you're playing the Jets or the Dolphins or the Patriots or any of the teams that we played in the second half of the year, I don't know that anybody was saying, all right, Robert Foster was the focal point of our defense. I still think they were looking at LaShawn McCoy. Oh, they were looking sure at Josh, too. And they were looking at Josh. Running. And, and Clay and all, whatever. But, yeah, I get it. And that and that's a, brings up an inter interesting dynamic because you think talk about Robert Foster in comparison to the other offensive guy on this list, Cole Beasley, and you mentioned it. Let's spin it positive for both these guys. Goes exactly how we think right. it's going to go. Cole Beasley comes out has 110 catches for a thousand yards. That's Wes Welker numbers. Right. It's that slot. It's the greatest slot receiver ever. Now Robert Foster and he'll, he'll average what maybe seven or eight catches a game, right? Yeah. Kind of thing. And average 11 yards of reception. Right, exactly. Or maybe nine and a half even, right? So um, so that's Cole Beasley. He has like maybe seven touchdowns, mm -hmm. right? But he has, but but say out of his 110 catches, 70 of them are for first downs, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you take that production, and then you stack it up against like Ro a guy like Robert Foster. Maybe he has 70 catches. Or even for, 60. Yeah, or 60, yeah. Okay, four, 55 catches or something. Say, say he has kind of the like doubles his production from last last seven games of last year or prorate it so he has like 55 catches 60 catches and he has what would it be over a thousand yards right yeah you have 20 say, yards a pop it right, would be right okay so you're yeah you're talking about, I mean, even if you're 17 you're you're right there all right so so he has that and but his plays like maybe on five or six games he makes the game-changing right. play to There's, win the game. We've all seen it. We go down through 150 plays in an NFL game. Three of them are the difference. Yep. He makes one of those every third game. I'll give you a right? perfect – Six give, games. Steve, so six, every third game – I'll tell you right he now, he's already play. done it. Six straight games last year. 
you know, week 10 to 17, right. six straight games, at least one catch of 25 yards or more. Every game. Right. I'm not, yeah, and I get it. 20, those are nice catches. But I'm talking about, you know, the 70, like the Jacksonville But I think catch. it speaks to the big playability right. that I'm talking about. So here. how does that, so how does Cole Beasley's impact compare with Robert Foster's yeah, impact? Yeah, does it when trump Cole, it? Yeah, does Cole Beasley's impact give Foster the opportunity you know, because they got three more first downs on that drive because of Cole Beasley, and then and then on the third first on that third first down he gets, they hit the forty five yard TD in the back of the end zone. Right. right, and and to be fair, which impact is better? Well, I I mean that's hard. To, that's it the, is that's hard. A question. And hey, if they can complement each other that way, yeah. it's a great dilemma. Listen, we're, and in we, terms and, of de, in terms of determining who's making a bigger impact. Copy. I mean, we put that out. There. We're spinning everything positive mm-hmm. for both of these guys and how the, how big their impact could possibly be if they both make the po- the impact that they're prototypically we've seen them make. You know, then it's kind of wow. Yeah. They're, they're both they're both. You know, it's a great problem to have, but it's right. probably not going to be. And that one way. more thing, and then we'll get to the phones at eight zero three zero five fifty. Robert, I think, is also somewhat misconstrued as strictly a go route guy. As we got to the end of the season last year, the last three or four weeks, he yeah. was not just running go routes. He caught he's the running curls. Late. Yeah, he's running comebacks. Caught the crossing curl, running the, hooks right on the goal line against Miami week seventeen. He caught that so, little pass going. And I the asked Dave, yeah, I, I asked Brian Dable about him, and remember, Dable had him for a year yes. at Alabama. Also, so that was a he huge said, plus. He can run a variety of routes. This is Dable talking about Foster. Obviously, running vertical is a strength of his because of his speed, but I think our staff did a good job with him in terms of of top-of-route technique, releases, playing against tight press. Those are all things you have to work on as a young receiver coming into this league. And then that was seconded by Zay Jones, because I talked to Zay about Robert, and he said in that Jacksonville game, Robert's not only running go routes, but curls, deep intermediate routes, where Rob's coming back to the football. Against Detroit, he was running crossing routes. These are all games late in the year last year, and that's the development he was showing after basically playing in eight games last year. He played half a season his rookie year. So coming year two, knowing the offense and diversifying his game, I mean, I really think he could take, I mean, he could really take off this year. 